Greetings and salutations, Kessler here, also known as Tarion, and welcome. First thing, do you guys want to learn how to texture some metal? Do you guys want to learn how to texture it in Blender? Well, welcome to this god-awful video. I am going to show you guys how to do that. Now, if you're wondering why I've been so quiet for the past year, mostly, uh, I've been experimenting in Blender, learning how to do well, anything in it, mostly texturing. And what you see in the background right here are some models I used as my guinea pigs, really. Now, some of them will not appear as an actual full-fledged mod project or make it into one, but there are some that most certainly will. However, in this video we will actually be focusing on some methods that I have worked on, and that is using custom brushes, stencils, and UV mapping. These are some important things when it comes to texturing, especially in Blender. Um, more importantly, the UV mapping, because we'll be making some male coifs, and it won't matter too much necessarily with the padded coif, but we'll also be making some nasal helms, and there will be two versions, one very plain and another a little more fancy. It's going to have some brass work and stuff like that. Anyways, on to the modeling and texturing. One of the first things we want to get right when it comes to 3D modeling is our vertice count. This is going to determine how much play we're going to have when we UV map and texture. Especially with something that's going to have a repeating texture like a coif. Or just male in general. Scale and lamellar also apply. But uh, this is going to be very important. And that is to get enough vertices on your mesh that are, is going to be effective at capturing the curvature because what's going to happen is as the texture is displayed on it there's going to be some level of distortion there always will and we want to minimize that by allowing the mesh to have enough vertices to actually allow for the distortion to happen clean cleanly across a shorter distance. I have found that 12 vertices on a loop works best, and that's what we're using on this coif model here. If you're wondering how to model like how I am without going over and touching any of the tools on the tool rack, I will be making a video giving a breakdown on how to use the hotkeys and just to give you an idea of what I'm actually using I am using the extrude tool primarily and the bevel tool which I use to add extra vertices to smooth out some areas and you can see here I'm trying to keep my vertices relatively even from one another it's very important to make sure you don't have a ton of very closely fitted together loops because then you get a bunch of ugliness with your mesh and your texturing and all that it's also important when you do something like mail or just anything with a repeating texture that has a lot of details that need to line up is to use a either the texture you will end up using or something similar to it so that you can make sure things line up and you can hide your scene the worst thing that can happen once you actually start texturing is to have your 
texture have a horrific seam somewhere on it and you would have to go back and redo everything. I like squaring up my UVs so it allows, like I said earlier, the mesh to be able to deform the texture just a little bit because it's going to be stretching it at a very short distance instead of a greater distance like you would see in some older models. However, not everyone is necessarily as, as to be honest, autistic as me. I take this stuff way too seriously and, well, it's not that big of a deal, but it does make the model look better when you have vertices align with the actual material that's being, that's being used. So, eh. One of the things when it comes to texturing in Blender is you can very quickly block out where you need things to be, especially with your textures, by using like the paint bucket, which is what I use to get my things set up. I always like blocking it up because it tells me where things are and I don't have to guess anyway. I won't have to guess anything. Something else is to, before you actually make like a duplicate, to ha make sure it doesn't actually have another texture, it'll duplicate the texture material and it won't save right in. It's a headache, so make sure everything has just one material. We're gonna start out with the padded coif mostly because it's a very simple process. I just use the stencil tool, which is just, you create a new material and that's it. And then you switch it over to stencil. You can use the um, overlay setting in your texturing. I like lowering my opacity so it's not a harsh highlighting. I usually start with white and then I go in darker to get the finer details in the darks in. I end up actually changing the color on the coif later on in the video. I don't show it in, on camera but I do it off camera because I just I ended up hating the way this coif looked. The color was terrible. I usually don't like beige. It's kind of Eh. but it's used a lot historically and I like making my stuff a little authentic one of the benefits in texturing a blender is what we can see here I'm using the actual corners or the vertices to have my stuff line up I wanted to have my uh, sewn slits I guess is the best way I can word it. The seams for you would have your stitching be along the actual edges of the mesh itself because that would that would make sense, let's be honest. It makes it much easier and because I can do it so easily in Blender I won't have to go in for each triangle and try and match it correctly. I can just do it on the model itself. And this is the biggest benefit in Blenders. You can just texture on the model. You also get a lot of immediate feedback because what you do there you can immediately see and decide whether or not you want to keep that or um, change it entirely. I well say this there is one major downfall to blender and that is you do not have layers you never will that is something a lot of people who do texture in blender eventually get over right but it's not really the end of the world you just have to hope that you do it right the first time I guess but you can see 
by this point I'm just fiddling seeing if I can change the color because I didn't like I didn't like how it looked uh, anyways I'll eventually get off of trying to change the color but this is a bunch of stuff that you can do I ended up just showing off what choices you have to do a lot of the texturing and it's kind of what you see a lot of the time in other programs and here I'm making another stencil but with the male texture and it's sort of a similar process to uh, doing the padding for the Gamison coif there's no real word for the original but something you have to do is scale and it's a bit of a hassle sometimes but you can see with all our work prior by making sure our UV was all correct that we don't we didn't really end up with a seam at all now onto the nasal hill this one's gonna be the plain one so it's gonna be mostly one piece it's gonna have some decoration because I like slightly decorated nasal helms and I prefer my nasal helms to actually have a prominent ridge I think it, it lends well to highlighting and just texturing in general and what we're doing here is using the overlay tool or overlay setting for the brush and I actually made a custom brush here and it's a very simple thing and I'll make a video showing how to do that and why you should probably also use custom brushes because uh, don't get me wrong the standard brush is good and all but it doesn't give you well texture I like the imperfections of this brush because it makes it look like a piece of steel that was cleaned up but not polished it looks somewhat cheap and well that's what I really wanted and here you can see there's also another tool it's a setting for the brush and it's a line tool I like using it a lot for these sort of things where I need very straight very precise line work and you can actually use the alt key while you're holding down with your left click to make your lines go either horizontally or perfectly vertically or even in 45 here I'm also doing some rivets this is something that I cannot stress please add rivets if something is gonna have a few extra parts or things added on you can of course insinuate that those things are sculpted into the material but if it's clearly not like having by having a shadow on the connection points added in I skipped over the uh, texturing for this one because it's just the same the part that I am showing you is the part where we want to add an extra material to it so we're doing brass work for this one because I wanted it to be the fancy variation Say a noble got it and decided I want some brass, right? And you can just use the color if you use gray, right? To work in and you're put in your designs. Here you can also change the spacing of the brushes. I'm using the standard brush, which I'm gonna be honest, didn't look too well. I should have realistically just done the a brush with the spacing uh, on to create the shadows and then gone in by hand and done the texture itself and done the rivets that way 
Um, there is another thing you can do in Blender, which is actually pretty cool, and that is have, if you're using a texture brush, select an option called Rake when you make your custom brush, and it'll actually follow your, um, your strokes, so if it has a certain direction you need it to face, you can actually have it follow along your brush. And I just pretty up this this texture. Adding edge highlights is also is a pretty good way of making metals look pretty good, or I guess somewhat realistic. In this case, I'm going slightly stylized, and always add some imperfection. Make sure things aren't always symmetrical. That depends sometimes though. Say you have, you don't have a whole lot of space, right? You're gonna have to make a few sacrifices. But this is overall a finished helmet. You can very quickly load up in say GIMP, Photoshop, Krita, whatever, and generate your normal maps and your alpha transparencies or whatever. Here I'm also just going in and adding some material uh, imperfections into the mail. But onto the glamour shots. And these are the final helmets. One of the main takeaways from this video is this is a not necessarily a tutorial but more of a guide on what you can do in Blender. There is some skill that is required, especially with the brushing, but overall, it's easy to do. And if you guys want to see another video like this, let me know. Tell me what you guys want to see me make next, what you want to see me texture, what you want to learn. I've spent a long time experimenting in Blender and learning how to do this, so might as well benefit and learn how to do it yourselves. And this is, of course, something I think would be cool is if you guys make something, pop onto the Discord and show it off. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys benefit from it. And to just experiment, always challenge yourself on your next project. And I'll see you guys when I see you. See ya.